I am Richard Rickey, former CEO and chairman of KPMG in India. I was also a global board member of KPMG. Um, the last few years, I was involved with KPMG Middle East practice, uh, uh, Dubai and uh, Muscat, uh, where I was a board member and an advisor. And currently, I am a board member of va on various boards, and also uh, I'm advising a number of startups in India, either as a mentor or as an investor. Taking you there as former CEO of KPFG and board member, what role do you think large corporations should play in supporting the startup ecosystem in Asia? Uh, actually, it is good for the corporation to support them for a simple reason. The startups, new age, uh, they think differently. They come up with new ideas, which will help the large corporations in finding solutions to some of their long pending and medium pending problems and issues they are facing. Secondly, uh, the startups need funding. They need uh, support as far as office is concerned, as far as IT systems, etc. The large corporations can provide them this, uh, which will help the startups achieve their uh, and we have seen a number of uh, companies which have actually worked with startups successfully. Both have benefited, the startup as well as, so I think it is time. And secondly, it's very important for the startups, uh, for the corporations to invest in startups because they are the future disruptors. So if you invest into your future, you will benefit from it. So that could be another way of looking at it. So from your experience as a business leader and consultant, how would you assess the current state of the startup ecosystem in Asia? Asia was a bit slow in taking off, um, but in the last four to five years, one has seen a great impetus in the startup ecosystem. Uh, Singapore is a good example. They have set up a one-stop shop for helping startups with their funding needs and their other needs. Uh, Vietnam, uh, in fact, is also like a front runner in this. Uh, uh, they are providing a lot of support to the startup community. In both these uh, countries, we are finding huge growth in the startup. Uh, today, I also learned that Philippines uh, and is also doing a lot of work in this. They have put the structure together. Number of startups have grown there. Uh, Japan is, um, is structured. They've got their own way of doing it, but it's also quite complementary. Of course, India, we have, we have more than 100,000 startups in India. So India is a huge ecosystem. China is, of course, the biggest uh, in amongst the Asian countries. So uh, when I talk of Asia, I'm not including India and China in that because they grew there. The rest of Asia is now catching up pretty fast. So in your view, are the incentives offered by the Asian governments effective in nurturing startups, especially in the value competitive market? I think uh, the incentives, my view of the way I look at the incentives, they are good but they can be much better because we're living in a very fast changing environment and they cannot be fixed in the way they look at the startups. Startups need a huge amount of support of funding and also timely funding, mentoring. Uh, today we've got to register some of the IPs which they create, it's very expensive. So could there be some kind of funding towards that? Uh, I think the whole thing is how do we create an R&D system? How do we provide them support system for them to function there? How do support systems for startups vary across Asian countries and which countries do you think have the most effective models? So um, I don't think anybody has the completely right model. Um, uh, uh, I would say China is uh, a good model where the private sector and the government came together to support the startup community. Uh, the others are uh, still evolving in their systems in trying to put it and uh, giving them benefits, but it needs to have a much more, uh, it needs to be done at a much faster and, uh, pace. So what strategies can governments adopt to ensure their broader economic agendas are effectively integrated with the local needs of the startup? Correct. So if you look at it, uh, uh, today startup has become a very integral part of any economy. Number one, job creation is a challenge. The startups help in the job creation because not only the founder gets it, but he employs other people. So this has become a big employment generator, number one. Number two, it's also helped uh, countries uh, get to new solutions uh, in the ecosystem and help the countries grow. Uh, the third, from a government point of view, is, is the startup is a, a, a community which uh, is the future. 
and the new age, they are adopting new age technology, etc. The artificial intelligence and all those uh, new things which have come up. I think uh, the older companies are a little slow in adopting it. The startup has no bureaucracy, they are able to do it and the cost of failure is much less. So I think the government needs to support startups a little more, I would say, in terms of providing uh, <clears throat> eco support, I would say, to the system. Tax incentives uh, is also a very big thing and there should be consistency of policy, which is very important. So what additional incentives or support mechanisms could governments introduce to better foster innovation and uh, I think, first of all, there needs to be encouragement for people to come into startups. There should be affirmative action. So people are coming in, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, for the people they employ, give them some incentive for the salaries they pay, number one. Number two, R&D support, common R&D facilities which they can pay as per use, so they're not creating the whole ecosystem. Secondly, another big challenge startups face is talent acquisition. So if a good HR management system, or there could be a system where people could share their employees between different companies, uh, you would be able to get much better talent in. Also support them through um, IP registration, uh, which I did mention earlier. They can support them through IP registration, which is very expensive, which could help them. And also um, uh, provide them a working space. You know, there's, an, uh, there's some good examples in different countries where governments have put up these hubs, startup hubs. Uh, Middle East is a very good example, though it's not Asia, where they have put up this startup hub where the government completely supports everything for the startup. So it, it's plug and play. You go in, put your thing, and you can start working from day one. Secondly, regulatory changes they need to bring. They need to bring regulatory changes. What happens is most countries have made it easy to register your company but very difficult to close your company. In startup, we know you fail, and then how do you close your company? So can we make that a little faster? So in India specifically, what, what kind of proportions do you see are in terms of failing startups? Oh, it's, it's a graveyard. Uh, so if you ask me, the percentage that uh, succeed are very few, but they are obviously um, uh, they amplified. The failures are too many, and they fail for various reasons. One is funding, number two, scalability, number three, uh, new markets. Actually, and I, I didn't, uh, you know, the other way the government can encourage is help them navigate the new markets, which are very complex and, uh, and difficult. So if the government can help in, you know, creating a marketing platform or a system where they could sell their goods. The services, goods and services. So talking to quite a few of the custodians of the companies the, from India and here, I find that their children, but the next generation, are not necessarily following their own company, where, which is a safe haven. They take the risk. Is it the risk ability and the backup that they have, or do you think it's a new trend? Or why do you think children are not going into the natural uh, business? Or they, I've seen most of them. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the reasons could be that those companies did not modernize with time. I'm not generalizing across, but they did not modernize with time. And when these kids have been exposed to other kind of new age companies, they feel, why can't we build something of our own? Thirdly, it could be that the, the, the individual person wants to put his own leadership style and brand onto something. Fourth, most important, these old these uh, these uh, brick and mortar companies valuations are not so great startup as we know with limited resources the valuations can be big so i think they've seen a very different world and they are aspiring to get into that world and i think that's one reason why they could be also they just want to be different from their parents so one could be just that you know i want to i want to build something of my own you give me some small capital i will start off so there could be various reasons which could drive them but I think they don't want to come into the old system, which uh, may not fit into their thinking. Amazing. And uh, what, in the last three days, I've asked this question to everybody, is that what are your key takeaways from Asia Meet 2022? Uh, I've been coming for the Asia Meet for some time. Uh, and uh, I find, uh, <clears throat> though we had a challenging year just gone by, and the year is coming to an end, uh, but the optimism for the future is very great. And I see, uh, I was speaking to some people who I met three, four years back. Their companies are stronger. They seem to be doing much better. They have evolved. So I find, uh, uh, I think one of the conferences we had that is this Asia's age, 
I think that is now almost on the, on the point of reaching there because we control 60% of the global population and maybe 50% or 40% of the GDP. So I think we are, uh, we are reaching there. Uh, one more point I would like to put, sorry, that post-pandemic, uh, 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 Asia has contributed 70% to the new growth economy in the world compared to the Western countries. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for your insights. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.